In the standard model, the core of a comet is said to be a giant dirty snowball. This core is called the nucleus, and it can be as big as a town. When the snowball comes closer to the sun, it starts to melt and evaporate water, which creates a big cloud around the snowball called the coma. The coma can change its size and can be bigger than a planet. As the comet moves, the steam and dust from the coma flies behind the comet and creates tails. A comet can have several different types of tails, dust, plasma, and sodium. The tails themselves are very long. Imagine how far it is from the Earth to the Moon. Well, the comet's tails can be several times longer than this distance. So just how big is the comet anyway? Let's add up. The core of the comet is your town. Its glowing coma is Earth, and its tails are several times longer than the distance to the moon. That's pretty big. Comets can also be much bigger even than that. That's why we can see them when they fly by. Let's try to scale that to our size. You hold a snowball in your hand, and let's say that is the comet's core. The snowball starts to evaporate and creates a big cloud and tail. You stand in the center of the cloud, and it's so big that it can fit 50 kids on your left side, 50 kids on your right side, 50 kids on your head, and 50 kids under your feet. Mm. From this cloud comes the tail, and it's so long that you have to drive for 20 minutes to find the end of it. Mm. And, on top of all that, the snowball keeps evaporating for years. Mm. How much water can melt from one snowball? But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, because the electric model, on the other hand, says that the solid core of a comet is rock. Imagine this rock is a starship that has shields which get stronger the longer it is away from the sun. When the comet comes closer to the sun... Ray shields! Now, hang on a minute. How can a comet do this? Well, the rocky nucleus has a magnetic field, or magnetosphere, around itself. We can also call this a plasma sheath. What's a plasma sheath? Well, it's like the magnetic field surrounding Earth. The sheath itself is around the comet, just invisible, and it has a negative charge. When the negatively charged comet comes close enough to the positively charged sun, it gets electrically stressed and its sheath starts to glow. On the Earth, you can see part of this glow dance in the sky as the North and South Pole auroras. What we see as coma and tail is this glowing sheath. The length of time the comet had to build up a charge relates to how bright the sheath will glow. The longer a comet is away from the sun, the stronger the charge. Hence why the comets we call long period comets glow brighter. The tiny particles that we thought were evaporating from the nucleus are simply an electrochemical reaction. Boom! When the small positive electron guys from the sun bump into the small negative guys on the comet's nucleus, it starts to spit all kinds of stuff. So yeah, we can think of a small comet as kind of like a starship with its shields up. Food for thought! Check this! This is the magnetic field of a comet. This is the magnetic field of Earth. This is the magnetic field of the Sun. The whole solar system travels hidden within the Sun's plasma sheath. <laughs>